Hey y'all, so since today is book club, I thought it would be appropriate to break out my glasses. I actually wear glasses pretty much every single day of my life. I just don't wear them when I'm filming, so y'all never see me in them. Uh, and that's because of this glare right here. I can't stand it. Ugh, it's hideous. So today we're going to be talking about the books that I read when I was on vacation. And I did take, with me to Hawaii, six books. And I thought that was going to be enough for my three week vacation. I figured like, okay, two books a week, that'll be fine. Um, but I definitely underestimated how much I was going to read. And that is pretty much what I do all day. I'm not, you know, we've been to Hawaii. We go to Maui every single year. We've done all the touristy things. We're much more about relaxation. We just want to go there, chill, de-stress all that. So what I do is pretty much lay by the pool or by the beach or sit on my patio and just read pretty much all day. So I devour books. So I really underestimated at six. I actually ended up going through eight books. Um, thank goodness my hotel, the condo, it's technically a condo, but it's, it's like a resort. So thank goodness we had a great book exchange there. Otherwise, I don't know, I mean, I guess I could have gone out and found some and bought some, but I'm so glad that was there for me to donate the books I was finished reading and grab some new ones for me. I definitely did not want to haul all those books back here to Texas with me, and my suitcase was already overweight. Um, someone may have filled up my luggage with liquor. It's like super cheap there in Hawaii. I guess they don't have the taxes that we do here. So yeah, I had Glenlivet in my suitcase and that took up a lot of space and weight. So I wanted to donate as many books as I could. I only brought back my favorites and the one that I was still reading. Um, so I'm gonna try to find some photos of the book covers that I did read so I have at least some point of reference to show you guys what the books were. So I guess first, I just wanna go ahead and get this out of the way. I took Eat, Pray, Love. I always do. It's kind of a tradition for me right before this trip to Maui every summer I reread Eat Pray Love. I typically start it here and then I read it on the plane and finish it while I'm there. Um, I don't know I don't know why or how that ended up happening but the last three years in, the, in a row I have taken this book and read it in Maui and I don't know it's just kind of a tradition each year that I really love and I do truly truly love this book. It's one of my top five favorite books of all time. It just it just puts me in a really great headspace for traveling, for getting into the energy of Hawaii. I just, I just love it. I know most people have probably already read it, but if you haven't, I can't recommend it higher enough. And, you know, most of the world is right. I mean, a lot of people love this book and it is really good. So besides Eat, Pray, Love and the book that I was working on, I only brought back two books that I had already finished. And that was Blue Notes and Crazy Rich Asians. Basically, these two were my favorites. Out of all the new books that I read when I was on vacation, these two are the ones that really stood out that I wanted to bring back home so I could have, so I could read them again someday. Blue Notes is one that I read right at the beginning of the trip and it's by Carrie Lofty and it is a new adult romance. I think that was the genre I was trying to think of, you know, when I hauled my books and my Hawaii haul before I left. Um, it's like, it's romance, it is, but it's not like the cheesy old romances that like your great aunt used to read, at least mine did smoking cigarettes and reading just book after book of, of romance novels. Anyways, um, it was it was a really, really good book. I highly recommend it if you're into romance. It has those like steamy scenes. It just, the, um, not, what would you call it? I guess just the main male character in the book. Like, oh my God, this book makes you want him so bad. At least I do personally. Anyways, it's set in New Orleans. It's based around kind of like Tulane. The girl, the protagonist, is a college student there. She meets like a local guy. It is, it is really, really good. I really enjoyed it. And so I'm gonna look and see if this author has any other novels that she's, you know, she has out because I would definitely buy every single one. So if you're into the genre, that's definitely one that I would recommend. The next book that I read was also a new adult romance and it was called Deeper by Robin York. If I can find a picture, I'll pop it up here. 
and I had never read from this author before but what I noticed was that this book was the first one in a series and it did kind of pique my interest to grab the second book to see where the story goes. The ending was kind of disappointing. I mean I don't want to spoil it for anyone but it wasn't just like an all tied up in a pretty bow happy ending and that's what I like. I don't like stories to leave me with cliffhangers. Um, so I am interested in picking up the next book and I, I need to go to the bookstore here pretty soon because I'm out of new books. I did enjoy it but not as much as Blue Notes. I didn't really have the interest to want to read it again and that's one of the reasons why I left it there and donated it instead of bringing it back. So that's kind of my barometer. If it was really really good it was worth that space in my suitcase. If it wasn't I donated it and left it. The next book was Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan and it it is good. It is really, really good. And uh, basically it's about Chinese, Chinese families living in Singapore and how there's this huge, and there is a huge Chinese population living in Singapore and how wealthy Singapore is. And Singapore is basically kind of like the Switzerland of Asia. Um, you know, like Swiss bank accounts for banking and finance and all that. Like Singapore is big big, big in that industry. Um, like there are some very, very wealthy Asians that, you know, all their bank accounts, all their money, all their holdings are all based in Singapore. Anyway, so what I loved so much about this book is that it was a great story, super juicy, but it has all these footnotes. I don't know if you can see down at the bottom. It has all these footnotes where they explain, you know, he just defines the words that they're using, um, a lot of the slang, anything like that, um, talks about architecture, just goes so in depth into the actual history so you just have a better understanding of what you're reading. Like he didn't, he didn't have to like whitewash the story, like he left so much, you know, traditional language and everything in it. Um, but because you have the footnotes there, you understand it and can appreciate it. And I, I mean, you know, like my favorite genre is like historical fiction or almost like historical romance. And so I love, I just, I love history. So it was a really great kind of chick lit beachy read for summer, but it was actually like, I actually learned something from it too, which to me, like that just makes it even more wonderful. So that was a huge reason why this I was justifying it and actually bringing it back with me. Then I read a Nicholas Sparks novel, The Lucky One, and it wasn't one that I had ever heard of before. I mean, Nicholas Sparks is an amazing writer. He's very good at what he does. He's a wonderful storyteller. I enjoyed the book. It was entertaining. I read it. Um, it wasn't boring at all. Um, I was definitely invested in the characters and everything like that. Um, it just didn't, I don't know, it just didn't really leave a mark on me or stand out in any way. It's a perfectly fine book if you're really into his writing or his novels. It's probably one you've probably already read it. Um, so it was, it was definitely good. I enjoyed it while I read it, but I didn't, I didn't feel like I needed to bring it back with me. It, I didn't feel like I'd ever really want to pick it up and read it again. The next one I also left there, it was The Second Assistant by Claire Naylor. And there is a sequel to this book that I might pick up. They did have it at Half Price Books when I got the first one, but I didn't know, so I didn't pick them both up. Um, but now knowing I mean, it was a good story, I might pick it up when I go there next. Um, it's just very traditional chick lit. It's about a girl who moves to LA and gets a job as an assistant at a, you know, a talent agency and just all the celebrities and the LA lifestyle that goes along with it. Um, definitely enjoyable. I mean, it was just, it was a good book. I enjoyed it, but like very, very much like so many other chick lit books that I've read. Nothing really left an impact on me or anything like that. It was just a good story that entertained me, you know, for a couple of days until I finished it. It was probably the shortest book that I read. I think I probably blew through it in two days, maybe three. Most of these, and that's why I went through books so fast, most of them lasted about three days. One last book that I left there, and it was Truly Madly Yours by Rachel Gibson. 
and this one I picked up at the book exchange at our resort um, because that is that was at the point when I had gone through everything that I had read and I was like oh crap what am I gonna do so I went down there and there sometimes there's good books sometimes there's not and there really wasn't that much down there um, I mean there, there was a ton of books but just nothing that really sparked my interest um, so I picked this up and it turned out when, after I got into it, I recognized that I had actually read something from the author before. Um, what's her name? Yet? Rachel Gibson. She's a very famous kind of romance author. I've read their real quick books, short books, kind of like this. I mean, you can read them in a couple of days. And that was the problem is that I picked this book up not long, I think like two days before I was going to leave. And I blew through it so quickly, I was out of books again. Then when I took that book back, I was hoping that there would be one more that I was interested in. And I picked up this one. It's by James Patterson. Again, one of like the best-selling authors of all time or something like that. I mean, he, he sells well. Um, and writes in some different genres. He does kind of like a crime suspense genre and then like kind of a more romance genre. Um, but this is Sundays at Tiffany's about a little girl with an imaginary friend who then meets her imaginary friend like 20 years later when she's all grown up and they like fall in love and you know have an affair and all that stuff. Anyways, um, it was basically like what was there that was at all interesting in you know for me and you know it kept me from having to find some place to go buy a book or something like that so I picked it up and I read it I think it was like the last day that I was there um, like the you know the night before I left or something like that that I grabbed this and then I read it on the plane ride home and then I finished it a couple of days after I got back this is the longest holiday by page tune and I don't know something just kind of piqued my interest having just got back from a holiday so I picked it up um, it's, it is really good. It's definitely chiclet. It has a little bit of a steamier side, but doesn't really go into details. It's pretty much just traditional chiclet. Um, I really enjoyed it, though. It's, it's basically about a girl from the UK whose, you know, newlywed husband impregnates another girl, like, on his bachelor night. And so she kind of goes on vacation to Key West, but ends up falling for a guy there, like a local, he's a Cuban guy there, and wants to stay. And so it's, I think it's a really great story, personally, and I recommend it. It's one that when I cleaned out my books, I don't know, nine months ago, something like that, I got rid of a ton, but I kept this one. And I'm glad I did because I really enjoyed the story. In fact, if I would have thought about it, I would have took this on vacation. So thank you guys for watching Book Club this month. Please, please, please don't forget to leave your recommendations down below. Like, I need, I need those. Those are very, very important to me to help me decide what I'm going to read next. And I will see you guys in a couple of days in my next video. Thank you so much for hanging out here on my channel. I really appreciate it. And remember, until then, that you are already famous right where you are in your small little hometowns. And that is all that matters. Love y'all. Bye.